Very sad day in the Grundy household. My 2012 model Arc'teryx Sabre jacket has effectively died. The zip is broken for the second time and the seams are falling apart. I love that jacket. The good news is my wife surprised me with an unexpected Christmas present of this, the Arc'teryx 2018 model Sabre LT jacket. So I thought I'd do a gear review of this. So Arc'teryx, for those who don't know, are a Canadian company who pride themselves on making high quality outdoor gear. And looking at their website under the shell jacket section, you can see they make a lot of them. And the Sabre LT jacket price wise comes in about number seven on the British site. 500 pounds, that's a lot for a jacket. But high quality materials and precision craftsmanship come at a price. I did take some comfort in looking at the other international pages and seeing it's about the same price in the different currencies. Often is the case that us British have to pay more for North America products, so that's a win. So what are the features of this Sabre LT model? Well, LT stands for lightweight. And the most obvious thing to me comparing my old Sabre jacket to this Sabre LT is this lining. You see how this Sabre jacket's got kind of like a furry, almost suede material to it on the inside? Whereas the Sabre LT has a sort of lightweight, almost tent fabric feel to it. And I can feel the weight difference when the jacket's on. And in terms of this jacket's intent and features, Architerics describe it as being a weather protection for big mountain free ride touring. It's presumably designed for weather protection in backcountry skiing and snowboarding. I.e. windy variable weather with lots of powder everywhere wanting to get up through the gaps in your jacket. And that last sentence is key. This jacket is cut to a longer length in both the arms and the body. Which makes it a little bit odd for everyday non-mountain use. Check out the sleeve length. <whistles> Extends way past the end of my wrists. I suppose the idea is it'll run down a good way past a snow glove and stop the snow from going up into your wrist. But actually there's not much gap there for me. It's quite tricky to, even with that Velcro strap off, to get that over. Well, it's quite an old glove these days, but... Um, Jeez. So yeah, that is pretty tight and would be good. Not very much space for snow to get up there when you're doing your thing. So yeah, good design for the snow. Bit weird for everyday use. Of course, I realize this glove is designed to go over a jacket and you guys are thinking, good, because you're acting like you didn't. But yeah, like the glove's a bit old and it's, uh, Got way too much room there to let snow in, so putting the jacket over it's an interesting option. And a similar story with the bottom of the jacket. This is a medium size and it's, it's a bit tight. Now you could probably argue that maybe I should have gone for a large size, but I don't want the jacket to be too big or too billowy. And in Architerix's defense, my hips and thighs are probably a bit bigger than average. Just measure myself, it's about 41 inches. Wow, that's powerful. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that size just in case you're worried about your own measurements. So it does fit, but again, it's tight, presumably to stop snow from getting up above your ski trousers. And the length, it is longer, but not really a problem for everyday use. Just need to lose a few pounds in the diet maybe. And if I compare it against my 2012 Sabre jacket, which is also a medium, zip screwed, but there's a lot more room there. So, I don't know, maybe they've cut the LT a bit tighter. And then there's the hood, which is cut super big, so you can get your snow helmet on. Slides over nice and easily. Still quite a bit of room there for the uh, head movement. Yeah, that feels good. Another bonus of having this extra large herd if I'm out on a night hike and I want to put this snazzy 15,000 lumen head torch on and it starts raining, hood can go up, just rests over the lip of it, stops the rain getting into the torch and short circuiting. Bonus. 
No Architerix jacket video should be deemed complete until we've done some kind of celebration of the craftsmanship of these seams, zips, fixings and logos. So I've got the light box out. Here's my little montage celebrating that. Roll the tape. <laughs> oh my god. I promise you, architects have not sent me this jacket for free. I think I've just got too much spare time on my hands. <laughs> okay, time for the all-important water resistance test. I've got this green t-shirt on which should show any wet spots that get through the, the Gore-Tex or the seams. Let's do this. <laughs> aggressive rain shower there. And pretty much fully dry. It passes that test. And the next topic is zips and happy to report the Sabre LT has got a lot of them. Now I use my jacket mainly for hiking, dog walks and occasional snowboarding and the extra zips are really useful for putting all the various gubbins that I want to carry on my body if I'm not carrying a backpack. And versus the regular Sabre jacket, um, this Sabre LT has a separate zip in the front here, which I find incredibly useful uh, because if I'm hiking, I generally have a copy of uh, maps on my mobile phone and this, I'm filming on the phone, so I'm using this, but it's about the length of a long phone and that slips in there really easily. And then there's two pockets on this slightly wider left and right and they're pretty roomy in there and you could put gloves or hat in still keeps it quite compact and then i think most saber jackets have these pit zips which for me i've got quite a high metabolic rate and these are essential just to let out some of the uh well the armpit heat uh, keeps it well ventilated and keeps me cool if I'm building up a lot of heat doing strenuous activities. And inside, this was similar on the Sabre, we've got another little precious things zip. That one's not so deep actually, I used to find it difficult to get a mobile phone into that one previously. And then you've got this mesh net thing here. I never really feel too safe putting any precious things in there in case it bounces out. So. Don't think I'll use that very much. And then there's the Arfid zip uh, on the top of the arm there, which is for you know snow sports people, where they want to put their season pass in the badge and just badge in on the uh, lift gates. The slightly strange thing about this is there's some sort of foam bar in this pocket. I have no idea what this is used for. It's right sewn into the inner lining of the jacket. I think we need some answers below if you know what that's for. Uh, I can't think of a purpose. So yeah, who knows what that's for? Maybe it's an anti-theft device, but it's there. You don't generally feel it, but it's weird. Just looking back at the Architerix website, I wouldn't be surprised to hear if a lot of people chose their jacket model based on price, color, but also zips available. I know it's really important to me, and to be honest, I wouldn't want any less zips than what's on this Sabre LT. So in terms of the jackets having this zip layout, there's that one, that one, the Sabre LT, but not much else really, so, hmm, interesting. And just for review completeness, uh, it's got an integrated powder skirt with, what is it called? Trademarked slide and lock attachments, if you can see those. Now, I don't use this, I don't have Architerix. Uh, snow trousers, in fact, I would consider it actually in the future. That's quite a nice design to uh, further reduce the amount of snow that can get up the jacket and ride over the top of your trousers. Okay, so let's conclude this video by taking this 
puppy outdoors and seeing how she performs. <laughs> Okay, so outdoors, apologies in advance for not testing this jacket in its uh, intended location, the big mountains that we spoke about before. Uh, not snowboarding this year, so I've just brought you out on the dog walk. And yeah, it's pretty mild at the moment, 10 degrees C, got a light wind. And I can't comment for all Architects jackets, but certainly the Sabre and the Sabre LT are excellent at windproofing to the extent you don't really need many layers on underneath so long as the Gore-Tex can shield out any wind chill. So yeah, excellent, can't complain with that. But yeah, 10 degrees C, um, you know, just got a cotton t-shirt on and I'm perfectly warm, certainly when you're doing some sort of activity. Uh, if it dropped to five degrees C, I might go for a light fleece or if it was zero or beneath, I'd go for thicker fleece, but um, yeah, generally, if you do an activity, uh, you don't need much in the way of layers. And in fact, the whole point of these shell jackets is that you use layering to get to your desired, uh, you know, temperature comfort zone. But yeah, as we're speaking at the beginning of the video, the strangeness of this LT jacket is the long arm length. However, when you go out on a slightly chilly day, it does have the advantage of being able to pull your hands up into it and it gives a windshield protection on your pinky fingers. So I'm sure that's not how Arcteryx intended it, but it works. But I guess the main problem with living with this long arm length is I'm sure the cuffs are gonna get dirty more as a result, I can already feel it touching more surfaces just as I move about. Uh, it's not looking too bad at the moment where it's fairly new, but I just know that's going to get really dirty where it's constantly down around my wrist and palm area. Now, of course, the whole point of this Velcro strap is to position that where you want it, and that's okay if I really want it out of the way, but generally I like a bit of airflow up into my wrist and don't like to do that all the time. Should have bought a different jacket really, but uh, I like the lightweightness of this one and I've uh, got too much dirt on now to send it back. <laughs> So that's about it guys on this jacket review. Uh, I think I've covered off all the stuff I wanted to say about it. Give me a like if any of that was useful in assisting your purchasing decision or just general liking for Architerix products and consider subscribing if you want to hear about more of my new videos coming soon.